Wendell Jones, and welcome to this webinar. This is sponsored by the Embassy of the Bahamas in the United States of America, where we have conversations with members of the Bahamian diaspora. In the current international context, Sports are becoming more commercialized. Sports organizations have become more competent over the years. In the United States, there is a growing number of Bahamians who are playing a significant role in the human resource development challenges of this country and others. While they were born in the Bahamas, there are many Bahamian coaches who are part of the Bahamian diaspora in the United States and are involved in training of international athletes, including Bahamians. Sporting events play a significant role in developing tourism and economic activities on the national and international scale. And this is why we have invited some outstanding Bahamian sports administrators and coaches to participate in this series of conversations that we in the Embassy of the Bahamas in Washington, DC are having with the Bahamian diaspora. Today, we welcome to the conversation, Idric Potier, who is currently head coach of the women's volleyball of Bari State University. We also have Jeremy Knowles, who is a fourth grade uh, teacher at Alabama, a uh, former uh, swimmer and Olympian. Avad Manka, uh, he is involved in uh, the academic program as coordinator at Georgia Institute of Technology. Uh, Norbert Elliott uh, is head coach, um, track and field and cross country uh, programs at uh, Purdue University. Um, Anton Richardson, a professional baseball first base coach for the San Francisco Giants uh, in the major leagues. Uh, he is a former uh, MLB outfielder. Uh, he played for the uh, Atlanta Braves in 2011, and the New York Yankees in 2014. Welcome to Mr. Richardson. Uh, and we have Mikhail McLean, uh, who is assistant basketball coach at Lamar University, uh, previously with the University of Houston Cougars. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to our program, and uh, we are delighted that you've all found time to to be with us. And I'd, I said uh, some things about yourselves. And so I'd like for you to uh, take this opportunity to uh, tell us what you've been doing um, in the United States of America beyond uh, what I have said and how you got involved um, in the various programs that you, that you are in. Let's begin with Mr. Poitier. All right, thank you for having me, uh, Mr. Jones. And um, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I actually started um, back in 1999 when I was uh, in college at St. Augustine's University in North Carolina. I actually was a student and coach of the volleyball team at the same time. But um, after completing my studies, I returned to the Bahamas where I continued my career as a police officer. I spent 30 years as a police officer in the Bahamas. And um, upon retirement in 2010, I returned to the United States to complete my college coaching career. So I've been to a number of schools and in the past 12 years, what I have been doing is spending about three years at each of these schools trying to rebuild their program. And um, so now I'm here at Bowie State. They've never um, won a conference championship. And I, I think they're, they pursued me because that is one of the goals of the new athletic director. And he's saying he, he wants someone who has some sort of experience in rebuilding programs and trying to make them viable within the conference. And so that's why I am now, I've spent the last year at a high school in Jacksonville. 
um, took them to the uh, district championship. We lost. I, I, I hated to, lo- to leave that team this year because I think they can win a state championship. I didn't lose any players on that team, but this opportunity was one that I just felt was a better opportunity for me. Very good. Jeremy Nunes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, honor to be on this uh, panel with everybody. Um, I think one thing that I uh, probably should mention uh, from from my bio, I think a lot of people may uh, probably know me better by uh, the guy who swam back from Exuma to Nassau uh, <laughs> yeah. a long time ago. My, my current shoulders ache just thinking about uh, swimming that distance now, but... Um, that was um, part of part of in, in my swimming career. That was, um, I think, a catalyst that um, uh, kind of at, at the time made me a bit more of a, a household name, um, uh, especially now with uh, that distance being uh, such a frequently known um, uh, distance, I guess, as far as uh, covering that amount of water. Mm-hmm. But um, I um, went into uh, elementary education at Auburn University um, my freshman years and knew uh, that was kind of the career path that I would uh, like to take. And um, I jumped right into my uh, teaching career after I retired from swimming and uh, after the Beijing Olympics. In fact, I had uh, secured my first teaching job before that Olympics and had to fly home after the Olympics a uh, week and a half into the school year and start teaching the day after I got back to the state. So it was a um, from one thing right into the next uh, for me, and I'm about to go into my 14th year of uh, teaching. I uh, teach a uh, fourth grade um, class uh, at, at Oscar Adams Elementary here in Gadsden, Alabama. Uh, Gadsden is about two hours west of uh, Atlanta. And um, our family uh, has lived here for a year. We actually moved uh, back to the Bahamas to live in Freeport in 2017, lived there for three years. And unfortunately, Hurricane Dorian, uh, as a lot of people know, uh, devastated both Abaco and Freeport and was was kind of a catalyst in a number of things that added up to us um, feeling the need to move back uh, to the U.S. to be closer to my wife's family. And um, that's why we moved back here. And um, it's been a great, great fit for for our family. Um, Surprisingly, a lot of um, Uh, similarities to a small country town and island living, um, which we really like. And um, uh, actually, this is my last day of summer break, about to start teacher work days tomorrow. Um, And so going going back into the workforce for fourth grade uh, starting tomorrow. Very good. Uh, Mr. Elliott, Robert Elliott. Sir, uh, Ambassador Jones, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to also thank... uh, uh, Sonia Bastian uh, Rose uh, for inviting me. Uh, when I received the invite, uh, I was excited. Uh, this is, I, I graduated, uh, first let me say this, I'm a, I'm a St. Augustine's College sacker. <laughs> for, those, uh, for those that like to hate St. Augustine's College. Um, I, I graduated from high school in 1980 and uh, ended college in 1981, January of ni- 1981. And for all intent and purpose, never really went back home. Um, it was my wish to graduate and to go back home and to work to become a civil servant. But um, I began training for the Olympic Games and I realized that the, the facilities just weren't adequate enough for me to go back home to train. So I began um, figuring, figuring out ways in which I could remain uh, legal in the US. And one was to work on a master's degree so I did that, and after receiving my master's degree in education, um, I went on to become an assistant track and field coach at my alma mater, University of Texas, El Paso. Um, and I was still wishing to remove, uh, to return home, but um, I just found that my calling, my true love was in coaching. Um, I, my, I began getting a master's degree in uh, political science, but uh, I soon switched because I realized that I just enjoyed working with student athletes and uh, the fulfillment I got and the joy and the excitement that they received from me coaching them uh, sort of soon forced me to switch to getting an education degree with a concentration in in exercise science. And uh, as they say, uh, you know, the rest is history. So I, I coached in El Paso, Texas for three years. I went on to coach at University of Georgia uh, for 10 years. 
during that time, I was fortunate enough uh, to coach uh, two of our more uh, famous Bahamian athletes. I was able to recruit Debbie Ferguson, our Olympic uh, golden, golden girl. I was also fortunate enough to recruit and coach for two years, Tonique Williams Darling. She subsequently transferred to South Carolina, but uh, those are two really good feathers in my cap uh, to, to have worked with um, well, you know, one of our own, Debbie and Tonique Williams. By the way, I recruited uh, Avard Moncur too, but Avard decided to go to Auburn University. Avard, I don't hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought I could get you to come to, to uh, Georgia, but that's okay. <laughs> You've done well for yourself. Congratulations. Um, so, uh, so I coached at the University of Georgia for 10 years, and uh, then I moved on to become head coach at Murray State University. Had a lot of success there as well. Um, spent uh, four years there, like I said. Then I moved on to the University of Tennessee, um, and I coached there for a total of seven years. Had a lot of success there. Um, one of the athletes that I coached, uh, a gentleman by the name of Aries Merritt, Olympic gold medalist and current world record holder in the hurdles. Um, and now I'm um, in my 10th year at Purdue University. Um, I got here because of another Bahamian, um, Rolando Green, who was hired as head coach. And he's now coaching at uh, Kentucky, University of Kentucky. But um, you know, in, in my time, I'm, I'm proud to say that I was able to recruit uh, many, many Bahamian athletes uh, to, you know, to get a college education. And, and many of whom have returned home to contribute to um, our lovely and thriving economy. So, um, I look back at my career and, and I'm just happy and I'm thrilled and I'm honored to, to be able to, to have contributed so much to, uh, you know, to not only the, the Bahamians, but also to the American based athletes. Very good. Um, you have uh, a, a, lot, a lot to tell, eh? And yes. uh, Vlad, um, perhaps uh, can expand on some of what you had to say. And so uh, we're going to get to uh, Vlad in, in a minute. Uh, let, let's hear. Uh, from um, Antoine Richardson. Thank you, Ambassador Jones, for, for having me on this panel today with um, all these uh, bright, bright men that have done so many, so so much great work work um, in sports. Um, I think you captured it all, man. I, um, I, you know, I, I played baseball professionally for uh, eleven years, and and shortly after. Um, Reti after retirement, started a nonprofit in the Bahamas, um, you know, based around youth development. And um, I couldn't, I didn't stay away too long from the game. I got, I got a few calls from a couple of different teams asking to, to come back into the industry and um, got my first off the field job with the Toronto Blue Jays in 2018, which was um, working with their front office and scouting departments um, for about a year. And then after that, got an opportunity to get back on the field with the San Francisco Giants and um, looking over some of their development in their minor, in their minor league levels. Um, and then a year after that was invited to join the major league staff with the, the San Francisco Giants here in San Francisco. And one of the biggest things that I've been kind of working on or toward is just creating avenues for Bahamians to get into this pipeline of baseball in terms of coaching. Um, you know, we have done a really good job over the past uh, few years of getting Bahamians into baseball in terms of becoming professional athletes. Um, and I think there are so many opportunities outside of just playing the game um, that exist um, for, for young athletes who, who didn't get to the final, the final table, so to speak. And um, just making sure that we create those avenues um, for Bahamians to have more opportunities to impact um, in the sport beyond just playing is, is something that really I'm, I'm kind of digging into into this uh, baseball industry. Um, but my first love was track and field. I see we have a lot of track track uh, people on, on the call. Um, did, did, did run, run for the Bahamas, for Carifta um, back in, I can't remember the year, but a while back. And I still have track and field coaches back home that are a little upset at me that I went the baseball route, but um, still have a lot of love for track and field. So that's a little bit more about myself, Ambassador Jones. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mikhail, uh, McLean. Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, Ambassador Jones, I want to thank you as well. Really appreciate you guys. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Sonia Rose, I appreciate you. I'm sorry I was so much of a hassle. Uh, to get in contact with, um, but I'm really just honored to be here with you guys. I'm, I mean, I grew up watching Avard run, uh, watching a lot of you guys. I've definitely heard the story, uh, Mr. Knowles, about you swimming for my parents. So 
I'm just honored to kind of be here in you guys' presence and, uh, you know, just talk about some important things for you guys. Um, I think you touched on everything, um, just a little bit about myself as well. Um, I actually grew up uh, running track and field in the Bahamas as well, played a lot of soccer. Um, I had a big growth spurt from 5'4 to 6'4, so everybody was like, all right, you got you to gotta start playing a little basketball. So uh, once I started playing basketball, I was fortunate enough to join the Rutherford Foundation in Houston, Texas with Frank Rutherford. Um, I spent five years in that program. I was able to get a scholarship to the University of Houston. Um, and then from there, you know, it just kind of, it just organically happened. Um, I graduated. I had, I had three broken, I broke my foot three times my senior year. So I didn't get a chance to play professionally. Um, so I was studying my master's at the time. I had another year left. So my, my head coach, Coach Kelvin Sampson, that's now at the University of Houston, said I can come back and become a graduate assistant. And then just from there, I just kind of fell in love with coaching. So um, coaching is my passion. I've been been able to travel the world playing and coaching basketball, but just the experiences and just kind of see how you can change these student athletes' lives. Um, it's been um, been it's been it's been my why. Um, and then just you know, it's my second year coaching with the national team and just getting that chance to connect with Bahamian student athletes. I've been recruiting a few. Um, I haven't been able to get the right one yet, or I haven't found the right one yet. Um, but I've actively been recruiting the bombs as well. Um, but just kind of coaching with the national team. I was down there for about a week um, in June and July. And I go back uh, this month to coach. We play against Venezuela and Argentina. So I'm um, just really excited just to give back to the Bahamas. Very good. Glad to hear that. Um, Mr. Vadman Kerr. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Jones, for having me. Um, I'm looking at the B in um, Norbert's uh, name. I wonder if that stands for Benjamin Button. You know, <laughs> you know, I he sounds like he's been coaching for many, many years. He recruited me as a 16 year old to attend University of Georgia. Um, and that seems like a world ago because I'm now in my forties. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, I started uh, at Auburn University and Ended up going there. Henry Roll, another Bahamian, actually ended up then recruited me there, um, but also was recruited by Norbert Elliott. Um, so, I mean, I think Auburn was just a really good fit for me. Uh, finally got my degree and had a short stint at, short, I guess that was kind of a long standard professional career and decided to retire in 2012. I started working as a cross country and track and field coach at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I felt like that probably was the next natural step for me. Um, but, you know, coaching is really a labor of love and it is extremely time consuming. I don't think coaches really get the credit that they deserve for the amount of hours that kind of goes into really uh, developing these young people into what they actually can be. Um, uh, I knew that that wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I actually moved into the administrative portion of uh, education and moved into admissions department we actually um, was able to connect with quite a few humans, uh, Bahamians that are actually pursuing art. Um, and I thought that was actually really another way to contribute to their development. I would have loved to have, uh, you know, someone in the administrative part of a university that I went to. I had it on the coaching side, but I mean, just having that resource for new Bahamians that are coming into those programs, um, I felt like that would have been very valuable for me. Eventually, I went and um, moved over to Georgia Tech, who I started working with the computer science department uh, as a program coordinator. And now I currently work in the biomedical engineering department as a program coordinator, moving into a program manager within the next year. Um, and actually come into contact with quite a few Bahamians who are pursuing medicine and also pursuing computer science degrees. So um, I look to contribute to the Bahamian economy in a different way, not directly through sports, but um, I've had a pretty rewarding career thanks to people like uh, Norbert Elliott and uh, Frank, uh, excuse me, Henry Roll and a few other people. So um, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Um, you are speaking from various states uh, in the United States, um, joining us um, in this conversation. Uh, this is the uh, fourth in a series that we uh, have been doing. And uh, it is just wonderful to, to hear from Bahamians who are doing well um, in the United States. And today we are focusing on uh, you people who are sports administrators and coaches. And uh, I'm sure that a whole lot of uh, Bahamians uh, around the world are happy to, to hear um, from you and to know more about you and the uh, contributions that you're all making uh, in the United States of America. I, I have I've had uh, conversations with um, 
a colleague ambassador is here in the United States and they uh, point to the Bahamas as uh, a sports power because of the number of uh, medals that we have won in international competitions. And um, today we can talk about uh, the uh, number of Bahamians who are uh, playing um, leadership roles um, in various uh, sporting endeavors uh, in the United States. Uh, tell me, um, Mr. Elliot, how do you feel uh, about the, the Bahamas and um, how we are performing internationally? I want to hear from you, uh, your perspectives, um, gentlemen. Yeah, uh, Ambassador Jones, you're exactly right. Uh, this is a known fact now that uh, the Bahamas is a, indeed a sporting nation. Um, I want to also point out the fact that uh, many of our student athletes have come over here, they've uh, gotten an education and they've returned. So many of them have continued on to in their own uh, professional endeavors in whatever sport uh, that they got uh, a scholarship in. But many of them have taken uh, and taken advantage of the opportunity of getting an education and to return home. Um, I mean, it goes all the way back from uh, uh, many of our B3A's presidents, you know, Bernard Nottage, many of our uh, political and government leaders have been have been athletes, uh, you know, the likes of Tommy Robinson. I, I mean, the, the list just goes on and on and on. So uh, this isn't something that's new. This is something that's historical. And I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm proud to be able to continue uh, uh, that that line of uh, having successful athletes that have contributed and that are continuing to contribute. Uh, so um, I'm proud of my role here being in the United States. Uh, just I'm sure as, as you are too, you know, uh, doing doing what you do and continuing to contribute. And um, so I'm just, I, I'm, I'm a born Bahamian, uh, you know, uh, as, as they say, uh, if you're born there, you're born there. And, and that, that's, that's me to the hilt. And I, I'll, I'll continue to uh, represent the Bahamas. I continue to sing the praise of the Bahamas. And um, so, yes, we are indeed a sporting nation and the world knows it. Uh, you know, us hosting the world uh, relays for, for several years uh, has put us on the world map. And we're just going to continue to get better and better and better. Uh, let, let all everybody come, uh, participate in this. And gentlemen, I want you uh, to, to, to tell me uh, whether or not uh, as, a, as a nation, uh, in sports and sports development, whether we are, as they say, punching above our, our weight. Um, anyone, Mr. Richardson? Um, first of all, yeah, just really proud of, of what we've done as a country. And um, are we punching above our weight? I, I don't Elliot, know, man. Go and um, just kind of setting, setting the standard. And it wasn't just a one-off thing. You look at every Olympic games, especially in track and field, um, the Bahamas has been represented, uh, on the medal podium, uh, over and over. And I think, um, that's, that's so great to see that we haven't only just had, um, you know, little snippets of success, but it's been growing and, and building off of each other. Um, Mr. Richardson, you mentioned earlier just about your nonprofit and, and going from the success that you've had and then trying to create that uh, stepping stone for others to, to do the same. And I think we see that now, uh, if we look back over 20 years now, um, the Bahamas internationally um, just performing really, really well. Um, and, and that's starting to, we're starting to see that even beyond track and field. Um, you know, we can look at baseball and, and basketball um, and major leagues now. And um, it's been been really great. So just my two cents uh, as a swimmer, and I think swimming is, is moving up and, and getting there. But um, just to, to look, I, I feel like every four years when it comes around uh, to the Olympics, we, I'm always kind of bragging about our, our per capita um, status and how small of a nation we are and how many medals we get at the Olympics. And um, it's just a really proud time um, at the Olympic um, avenues when, when we can talk about how successful we are for such a small nation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Richardson, I think you wanted to add something there. No, I was just I was just going to add that. I think that, you know, obviously we're doing, we're doing really well, but when I think about it, I think back to the, um, to, to athletes in the past that have created this, right? So you think of Dama Berth Isaacs, Dorit Knowles, Tommy Robinson. And so you think about, um, and, 
you think about all these athletes have that created this path to allow us to have this platform that we, we currently have. Um, and I think that we, we continue to fight to create more access and avenues for more Bahamians to, to do the same. And so I think we have done a really, really good job. Um, but I walk around that island some days or the country some days, and I see so many talented um, athletes that um, are just looking for an avenue or resource to be able to showcase that talent on the world. And so, yes, we probably may, we have been punching above our weight, as you, as you mentioned, but um, I think that, I think there's room to grow and punch, punch a little, a little higher than we are currently punching. Okay. I'll back to, I'll talk on that as well. Um, just, you know, representing the Bahamas national team, um, to see, you know, guys like Buddy Hill, that's the true ambassador for the Bahamas, um, DeAndre Aiden to be the highest paid um, athlete to ever come out of the Bahamas with that mega contract. He just got Kai Jones is representing the Charlotte Hornets. Um, all of those guys, like for them to represent the Bahamas, so even Clay Thompson, even though he wasn't born here, uh, he won his NBA championship and he had his flag as proudly as someone that was born and raised here, you know, like just to see those guys represent the Bahamas with class. And then, you know, Jazz is playing, um, playing baseball professionally. Like I feel as though track and field has been pulling the weight for a very, very, very long time. I think swimming was always very competitive, um, but I feel as though the other sports are finally starting to catch up. And now it's not just, okay, Bahamas, the, um, the country that's full of track and field athletes. Like it's Bahamas, the country that's full of athletes, period. And without the resources that we've had, where, you know, players like myself, everyone that have to travel to the States to become successful, I feel as though whenever we do finally have the money to put in more, to get some of those resources back home, um, a lot of those kids that are underdeveloped that are unseen are going to start being able to, you know, I feel as though we have so much more that we can give, but it's just a process to get to it as well. So I just want to speak on that. Mm -hmm. we, we're talking yeah. about development. Of, uh, but, but Mr. McGurk, go ahead. I, no, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, it's good. Oh. Um, I just think um, the key thing is really just having examples. Um, in terms of development, I think the Bahamas is moving in a really positive direction. When I look at the, the National Track and Field Stadium, oh, my God, I would have loved to be able to run in a stadium like that when I was younger. Um, you know, what an amazing gift that was um, given to our country. Um, but, you know, uh, I think in all the various sports, as uh, some of the other guys have said, you know, you just have examples and Bahamian young persons can see uh, what actually is open to them. Um, but it also is good to kind of have people in place like a Norbert Elliott and a Henry Roll and all this, because like for me, I know that it was life changing to actually have access to those resources. I don't know how I would have gotten it otherwise. Um, so when you have people like that, that are pulling uh, students who have potential into a pool where they have everything that they need, it really could be life changing. Um, and, um, but no, I think the government continues to pay attention to, you know, trying to develop that in terms of the facilities that they provide. I think there's probably, people always say there's more that can be done, but I think we're moving in a positive direction in terms of how they're approaching it. We're talking about human, uh, the development of our human resources. And um, I guess Bahamians who have excelled in sports have done so because uh, they are, uh, have been disciplined uh, to, to put out their best, to do their best, uh, and to work hard. Uh, let, let's talk about the level of discipline or indiscipline um, in the Bahamian society and the extent to which we are able to do better. I, I know that many Bahamians are proud of what we have accomplished, but uh, as someone said, that there is room for improvement. And so today we want to inspire other young Bahamians uh, to achieve. Um, can we hear from uh, Mr. Poitier? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I believe that sports provide the avenue for enforcing discipline. And I, I think um, one of the things that um, it's hindering our society in terms of uh, discipline is the fact that there, there's not enough um, junior development in sports um, in the Bahamas. I mean, there's baseball, Freedom Farm and, and those JBL and those have their um, programs going and it's doing a tremendous um, service for young men in the country. But I believe if we were to get back to the days when we had um, junior league basketball, um, 
junior league volleyball. We had all of these things in the past. It would give the young people an avenue to get off the street and, and find something to do. And I think um, at some point, we, we're going to have to go back to um, getting the individuals who are responsible for um, youth development in the country to understand that sports is the perfect avenue for discipline for kids and just um, get them involved in sports. And I believe we will see a tremendous turnaround in the lack of discipline that we have in our society right now. Mm-hmm.